Hi, this is Dave Clark. Today I'd like to go over a common deadlock scenario that I see and how I usually test it and correct the deadlock. Um, I know many people might be familiar with, with deadlocks and locking in general, but for those that may not be, I thought it might be a good idea to just review a, a diagram to explain the concept of a deadlock. Now this is from Microsoft SQL Server 2000, but uh, the concept of a deadlock, you know, is still the same. Uh, in this example, they're talking about table locks, but it's important to note that it could be a lock on a table, a page could be locked, or a particular row could be locked. So in this example, they have a transaction one that is holding a lock on the supplier table. And transaction two has a lock on the parts table. And that in itself is perfectly fine. We haven't hit any snags yet. Then transaction one would like to acquire a lock on the part table. So it tries to do that, but it's blocked by transaction two, which has a lock on the part table. Again, nothing terrible yet. I mean, we're, transaction one is going to be a little delayed until transaction two finishes or releases that, that lock. But then transaction two determines that it needs to get a lock on the supplier table. So when it tries to do that, it is blocked by transaction one. So now we have transaction one blocked by transaction two and transaction two blocked by transaction one. Based on this, we've created a scenario that will never finish. So what SQL Server does is it will determine based on cost which one of these it will select as uh, what's known as the deadlock victim. So one of these transactions will be terminated in order for the other to finish. And nobody wants to have their transaction terminated, whether it's just straight SQL statement you're running or you're in an application that's connected to a database. You know, the end user gets this annoying error message pop up and they're, you know, unsure of what's going on. You do not want these deadlocks to occur to to terminate uh, transactions. So one of the methods that um, I've used that, that you know that I've seen uh, others use as well, because um, yeah, I believe me, I didn't create this, I, I just learned learn from others, and that's why I do these videos, try to to, to share what I've learned, um, is is to um, put the transactions, or excuse me, put the statements that are causing the deadlocks into loops so that you can try to, to recreate the deadlock because the issue is uh, all about timing. For example, you know, if, if your users are reporting deadlocks often and you might go into profiler and um, choose to get the, the deadlock chain or deadlock graphs and the deadlock graph, uh, here we can see I have a select statement and this is the bit of the contrived example I was doing with my stuff in the loops to actually make a deadlock, but this is a select statement and over here is a delete statement. So the select statement is going to use an index that we have to read data, but then it needs to perform a key lookup. So it'll go back to the primary uh, key or excuse me, the clustered index, well, the primary key happens to be the clustered index in this case. It'll go back to the clustered index. So it's acquiring the locks on both of these, and then the uh, delete statement is trying to delete data from the clustered index and all associated indexes. You know, it has to remove from there. So it has, tries to delete from there. And if these happen at just the right time where the select has this lock, and the delete has this lock, and then the select tries to get this, and then the delete tries to get this, then we could be in a deadlock scenario. But because that's nearly impossible to try to replicate, that's why I, I go through the method of, of doing things in, in loops. Um, so that it, you know, SQL Server will process it thousands and thousands of times, and eventually that's, that's going to happen. So what I've done here is to uh, just create a table called contact, just have a contact ID on it that's an identity and a first name column, a last name column, and the company name for, for the contact. We've added 
the primary key clustered on contact ID, and then we add a non-clustered index, IX contact, last name, first name, and it's last name and first name because you know that's what we search on a lot is based on last name, things like that. So this will be much faster than performing table scans. Then I've inserted a couple records, and then I'll just do a select here so we see what the table structure looks like here. Okay. I'll just do uh, Alt F1 for the SP help, and you can see we've got our clustered index and our non clustered index on last name, first name. All right. Now, the select statement that's getting deadlocked is select company name from contact where last name equals Smith and first name equals James, you know, something to that effect. Um, and the delete statement that's getting deadlocked is basically the same. It's trying to delete a particular record. So, you know, why is this select and this delete conflicting? And it's if we look at the estimated execution plans, Um, find this. Yeah. All right. Th yeah, this is just something I almost forgot here. This is very good for um, those that are trying to test. Unless you can, you know, you you're not always going to have access to a copy. You know, you might be working with a client. You don't have access to a copy of their database, or in production, you don't have the exact same data in um, in in your QA or test or development environments. Here, I'm not getting the uh, same execution plan that, that it was that was causing the deadlock. And the reason is because I only have two rows in there now, SQL Server is determined it's easiest just to scan the entire table. So um, what I will do is I do have just to insert a row. So I just said, you know, insert two rows and run it 10,000 times. So I'll just go ahead and run that. Okay, so now we're done with that. And now if we look at the estimated execution plan, we see, okay, it is going to use our index, IX, here it is here, IX, contact, last name, first name. But then it's also going to need to look up, uh, uh, perform a lookup against our clustered index, PK contact. And then we'll look at the delete. We'll look at the estimated plan here. And you can see it's going to use the IX contact last name, first name here. And then when it goes to perform the delete, this is where we can have our locking because it's going to need to work with the clustered index PK contact. And it's also going to need to delete from IX contact last name. So it's going to need to acquire the locks in both of those. Okay. So what my, uh, or not my method, I did not create this method. The method that I use to troubleshoot this is to create a temporary table that contains all the columns that are in a select list. So in my example, I tried to make this very simple for the demo, I only have one column. So I create a temporary table with that one column. You know, so that'll run once. And then in a while loop, I'll have this run 50,000 times, um, select, uh, selecting, uh, basically inserting into that table from the select statement. And then I uh, truncate the table just so there's nothing in it. And, increment one and then just keep looping through. So it basically keeps running the select over and over. And I have a note here, like why we use the temporary table, because you know if my select statement had 10, 12, 15 columns in it, and some of them might have been quite large, and uh, you know, trying to return all those result sets to Management Studio can take a very long time. So it makes it kind of a pain to try to test. Uh, and also, sometimes you might run into out of memory, excuse me, out of memory errors on your on your uh, test systems. And then in the delete statement, 
Uh, this one I just do inside of a transaction, but then I roll it back each time. Because if we don't roll it back, then once the delete's done, it's there's nothing more to delete. So then it would be very difficult to try to have the delete and the select be occurring at the same time. So running these, you know, around 10, 20, 50,000 times each, eventually they'll be hitting at the same time and trying to acquire the same locks. And th again, this is just one deadlock scenario that I see the most. The, the select statement deadlocking with a um, insert, update, or delete statement. There are plenty of other you know, ways deadlock can happen, but this is by far the most common that I see.